video and audio files, images, and photographs, among others. So these are digital artifacts. Then a digital infrastructure, a, a platform, this is a set of services and architecture that helps to offer complementary product or service. And the platform enables entrepreneurs. So which now, apart from actually coming up with digital products, we can also use digital technology as digital platform to create another business model. So it enables the entrepreneur to grab the opportunities in order to develop complementary goods and services and meet the market opportunity and competition. An example of such is social media platform. You can see some of our youth now, they are using that to promote their businesses and so on. So we have, exactly, we have Facebook, we have the Twitter, Instagram is there, LinkedIn, WhatsApp, and so on and so forth. Then, of course, also is knowledge stroke information platform. You have the Quran, you have the Yahoo Answer, and so on. Then, the media sharing platform. And that is where we have the YouTube, uh, Vimeo, and so on and so forth. And all of these people are already using them to actually create a business opportunity and making a lot of money even on it. So, this is um, a digital platform. And of course, we also have the service oriented platform. You have the Ubers, here, BNB, and so on and so forth. So, these are the platform as a result of digital technology that helps an entrepreneur to actually come up with a business, another business idea to service, uh, to produce good or to service the need of other people. Then, the digital infrastructure, they are the tools and system of digital technology that provides communication, collaboration, and or computing ability to upkeep innovation and entrepreneurship. So an example of that is crowdsourcing and crowdfunding that enables entrepreneurs to communicate with potential customers and also investors to obtain different resources like innovative ideas and capital on global scale. So we have that kind of platform today that people can actually crowdsource even for fun towards a particular project. So all of these, what I'm saying is that they are the various, uh, uh, various form of data uh, we can use even to actually improve the economy of uh, our country. Then, what then are the various entrepreneurship opportunities offered by digital technologies? Economic value creation using digital technologies can be categorized into four four types. The first one is digital production, which is the creation of digital artifacts, just before as I mentioned the other time, such as codes, and that is output, uh, apps development. We have the online content, and that is pro, uh, 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 providing kind of content that will be of value to other people, maybe in terms of education, maybe in terms of health, and some other uh, aspects even of human life. Then it could also be a website, then a mobile application or software. So all those ones, they are digital production. Something that you can actually see, even to help other people. Then we have the information processing, which is the creation of useful information at a low cost by editing, transferring, integrating, and analyzing existing information. An example of such is, uh, just as I mentioned at that time, big data analytics, data science, machine learning, automation, algorithmic computing, and artificial intelligence. They are all efficient of information and processing. Then we have the user interconnection, which allows user to interact or develop content collaboratively, thereby leveraging network effects, social networks, and crowdsourcing platforms are key examples of such user-driven collective value creation. Then the fourth one is the market intermediation. These are the various opportunities that digital technology is actually creating even for any would-be digital entrepreneur. We have the market intermediation, which exploits digital technologies to alleviate information asymmetries and reduce transaction costs in... a matter, a matter of, of uh, clicking even the button, button. You, are, you are able, able to, to get, get all that people you need. need. 
Especially uh, under six months, they call just Google it. Then you get all the information that you want. If you want to know what is the exchange rate of uh, maybe dollar to naira, dollar to euro, it's just a matter of just typing it and then you get the information. So, it has provided that market intermediation and thereby to, uh, uh, to actually reduce the information asymmetry. So, that is uh, another opportunity. Then, linking the digital entrepreneurship and economic growth, the role of entrepreneurship as the driving force of economic growth as its foundation in the theory of Joseph Sompeter of new combinations, saying that if you are able to find new combinations of factors of production, which is a process of entrepreneurial recovery, will become the engine that will drive economic development. So, and this new combination constitutes better ways of meeting and assisting demand or creating new products, often making current technologies and products obsolete. Well, of course, that is the called the process of creative uh, destruction. So, because well, uh, the way God has created us is such that, yes, we want something new every time, something new, something different, something, and again, that is that also informs that even uh, probably say that uh, 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 spice is the, uh, um, that variety is the spices one of life. So, so as a as result of that, that ability to able to now to combine different factors of production to then come up with something that is new, something, or maybe to, to improve on the existing world, then definitely also is what even the digital technology can actually even provide. So as a result of that, the important role of entrepreneurship in digital technology, the important role it can play in the economic development of the Nigerian economy, including, of course, improving the per capita income, then generation of employment, because I don't want to just waste time on that, but these are just reality of what can happen. Because exploitation of opportunity of the latter, of a latent and idle resources like land, labor, and capital, the national income and wealth in the form of goods and service will increase. And this, in turn, will help even to increase the national product and per capita income. It can also generate employment. Of course, it's very evident for us even to see how even the ISIS battalion came to Nigeria has generated a lot of opportunity, employment opportunity ranging from the sales of uh, ICT equipment to the services being offered and so on and so forth. And of course now using the digital technology to create a different business uh, models. Then balance of regional development. Regional disparity in economic development can be addressed because business utilizing uh, digital technology can be set up anywhere in the country. You can be in a village and still be able to produce even your good or service and then be selling it both even within the country and outside the country. So, and that is why you can then, so instead of people moving from the rural area to the urban city, they can actually stay where they are and then be still make even their money, uh, revenue. Then, digital economic uh, and economic growth also, uh, uh, the two together, together can also improve the standard of living. That this digital entrepreneurship can bring cost reduction, which help to improve the standard of life. As we all know now, those that are deploying uh, 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 their service over digital technology, they are able to reduce the cost and thereby also increase the, uh, improving the standard of living. The economic interdependence also, digital entrepreneurship can provide substitute and improve product or services, and reduces dependence on foreign goods and services. As a result of that, it will, number one, reduce prey on the demand of foreign exchange, and at the same time also earn foreign exchange for the economy. So all of these, they are way by which digital technology combined with entrepreneurship can actually improve the economy of this country. But I'm not going to, I, I want to now look at what, what are, are then the effective, effective ways of exploiting even this opportunity? opportunity? Because, because I, know I know that some people might be interested in that area, and as we're going to see later, we're going, we're going to see some examples of uh, digital businesses, then the skills that are required for you to be able to uh, become a, a digital entrepreneur. So, so what, are the, what are the effective ways of exploiting all these opportunities that mentioned? Uh, digital entrepreneurship appears to have the potential for positive economic effects such as increasing efficiency, just as already been noted, 
improve service quality, creating high quality jobs in local economies, and promoting inclus inclusiveness in economic development. I've already explained that. Therefore, policy for boosting entrepreneurial capacity should not only focus on the macroeconomic condition or access to finance alone, that they are also good, but also on strengthening the entrepreneurial skill and improvement of entrepreneurial framework condition so that people can then uh, take the advantage even of it. So as a result of that, we are suggesting here that there's the need for the support of development of digital and entrepreneurship skills, just even as the university is doing now, actually supporting that, developing it and encouraging even the students to actually look in that direction. Then there's the need also to improve access to resources for the creation of digital businesses and digitization. Uh, well, of course, we are still having challenges along that area. Uh, apart from maybe the urban city, there are still some cities in Nigeria or even some towns that uh, you still find it difficult even to have the internet access. So sometimes it fluctuates that, of course, sometimes it can be very frustrating. So that they need even to actually improve that. Just even as I said, that uh, if we really want to uh, uh, retain anyone that is in the rural area, to stay wherever he or she is, and then be able to come transact from his business over there, then they need to make sure that the internet connectivity is uh, good. Then access to finance for digital entrepreneurship so be improved and uh, through support and or promote crowdfunding platform so that by that people can actually attract funds to establish uh, digital businesses. Then let me just mention some digital entrepreneurial business ideas that can begin to look at. We are going to look at it even uh, in group so that we can, we can begin to break that one down later. We have what we call drop shipping. This is kind of model whereby products are bought directly from a supplier or manufacturer and then ship to your customer. There's no need for you to carry inventory or to buy products in bulk all just, just need to do is that you just uh, pay for that even goods, goods and then the manufacturer or the, or the supplier will ship it down even to the buyer. So, so of course, we all know that the Congo, uh, uh, Congo is there, GG and so on and so whatever. So that is, so we do that. And I have a lot of students also at Obafemi Law University that actually make a lot of money even through that. So they will order for some material, uh, other uh, phone, mobile phone, some other things, even on behalf of their students, they just gather the money, order for them, and then of course it will be uh, delivered even to uh, the customer. That is drop shipping. Then we also have the prints on demand, and that is this one is good for the artist and designer, and it involves working with a supplier to customize white label products such as T-shirts with your own design, uh, with your own design production of e-cards, flyers, and so on and so forth. You know. Uh, the days that we patronize all these cards, greeting cards for Christmas, greeting cards for uh, New Year, or two, I think those days it's already, uh, uh, it's already even uh, passing by. Now these the days where, of course, the, the, the flyer, the card, can actually be created digitally. And then you can send it even at a time to so many people to greet them and to felicitate people with them. So, and so with that, those that are into that, that an artist or into graphic design can actually explore that possibility. Yes, establishing business, letting people know about even uh, their services, and of course before they know what is happening, they are making money through it. Then we also have selling digital products, and those, especially those in uh, ICT, the, the Department of uh, uh, Computer, they are goods. That for, the, the, this one is good for creators and educators whereby digital products are created and sold online. And examples are music, video, e-books, and online courses. Of course, uh, the reality of the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic also has forced even so many educational institutions even to begin to do the kind of online courses. Now, so with me that, if you have an expertise along even a particular area, you can develop a kind of online course for people to actually attend even that class and, and then, then, of course, there's a way in which you can make revenue out of it. Either they are going, going to subscribe to it, or if your uh, site has a lot of traffic, then, of course, all these big uh, 
uh, ICT, ICT companies, companies can actually make it even as a platform to advertise for their customers. So, so these are the digital even products. Product. Uh, okay, the, the website address on the screen, and that is uh, skillshare.com and udemy.com. They are good platform that anybody that is interested in creating online content can actually explore. So that one is for free. Just go there and then you, of course, you can register and then you can then begin to create your content and then begin to popularize it and let people know about it. So and once if it is useful, then of course before you know what is happening, you're already making uh, money. Then there's also the self publishing and that is there's direct, you are the one that is going to directly manage the editing the design and the production processes of a book. So there's no need for the publisher now. Yes, uh, doing even all of that. You, so there's a platform that is going to manage everything for you. As, as seen on the screen, we have the Amazon Kindle Direct Publishing, KDP. We have the Apple Books. We have the Barnes and Noble, Pre, uh, Noble Press. You have Draft to Digital and self-publishing school, so we can explore the possibility of all of that, but there's the need for you to actually take time to read through, to understand how you can make use of any of the platforms. Then we also have the freelance. These are digital entrepreneurship business idea. Freelance, this is, this involves, though you are self-employed, but you are also working for different companies on particular assignment, on a contract or project uh, basis. It allows flexibility because you can take your office wherever you go. An example of that is when you are turning your skill like web designing, very, very good at that, marketing, copywriting, Apple development, translation, transcription, and so on into a profitable home based businesses. So if somebody has even expertise in that area, there are lots of demands even for that. So uh, from, as we have seen even from the screen also, we have even some sites where even uh, uh, you can look at and see the failure skills are being demanded. And if you are very good at any of them, you just sign to it. And then, of course, you complete all the necessary processes and then you start. So for, tra uh, for translation, you have the www.translatebase.com. For transcription, maybe transcribe even uh, from one language to another, you have the... Uh, Motec.com uh, and so on and so forth. So these are various uh, digital entrepreneurship business ideas that can be exploited. Then, what are then the skills for business entrepreneurs? Because it's important for you also. It's not something that, of course, is something that uh, uh, the, the entry is very easy, and at the same time, you don't have, you don't need people to have a lot of uh, capital for you to start it. All just need either your phone that is internet ready or uh, laptop, laptop or any, any of those, those uh, uh, ICT, ICT that can actually, that are ICT ready. So, but at the same time, it's important even to know that some certain skills that will actually help you to make success even uh, 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 online, that is using digital technology. So, and basically, we have the soft skill aspect of it, and that includes problem solving skill. It's important for you people to now to be able to solve problems, then people and relationship management. M more so, so that, that yes, you are dealing with virtual people. people. Yes, though yes. real, but at the same time you are virtual. So you must be able to know how to relate with people and to manage people that relationship. Then of course communication and presentation skill. Yes, because it is what even you have put even on your site that people will read that will actually either attract them or push them even up, put them up. So and that is why that skill is very important. You, you, you put even the content in such a way that's going to be attractive, it's going to retain their interest and for them to know more of what even you are doing. Then, of course, the time management. That one is very important because uh, uh, unlike uh, when you are going to, if you, you have promised your customer that you are going to deliver within two days and it, cannot, it must not be more than two days. Because, and by that, that is going to help you to develop even that even trust that will be required to actually uh, patronize it again. Then, apart from this soft skill, we also have the technical skill. Well, we may not acquire all of this skill, especially the technical aspect of it. Some of them can actually be at source. So, but those ones that are very important, they are digital marketing, uh, and that is uh, search engine optimization, SEO, search 
engine marketing, SEM, and social media marketing. All of these are very important because they're going to help you to build a robust presence online in terms of, um, of ranking on searches and, gan and garnering audience that engage even with your brand. Then, apart from having that digital marketing uh, uh, skill, it's also important to have creative content and curation skill. These are required to engage your audience and also to attract them to the website and social media page. So then the analytic skill is very important. You are able to learn about the movement of the audience, their interest, because as we know that it is not what you are producing or the service that you are offering that is, uh, that is important, but actually what people want, how they want it as well. So, so ability to able to now understand what are the interests even of your target uh, customer? Then, as well as you have to understand the demographics, understand the social media trends, and by that it's going to provide you insight to make informed decision. Of course, we have the Google Analytics. It's an important tool that can actually assist you to find out many insights into your website performance. So that is going to help you to see whether people are actually uh, visiting your site, whether daily, weekly, or monthly, uh, whether, whether it's actually, actually which, which of the, the uh, pages within your site is actually top performing, and the, 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 the post that's, that's actually been visited even uh, regularly, then the traffic to, the, to your site. All of these, they are going to actually help you to be able to maintain your presence online. Then the cloud computing skill also is very important. But as I said, you may not need even to have all of these skills. These are all the skills that actually are actually going to help to be able to maintain your presence and be relevant over there. Because as you all know, you have millions and millions of businesses over there. So for your, for your own to be on top and for people to always look at it, that is why it's important to have all of these skills. This cloud computing, of course, the world is moving into the cloud, which makes storing, assessing, and sharing of data online. Because it saves the cost of physical infrastructure. You don't need even to build a very large, even uh, a, a, a structure and uh, get even all the hardware and software. Everything is over there. Where the only the only challenge there is the data uh, privacy. So, but at the same time, save the fiscal infrastructure, hardware, and software installation, and of course the maintenance also. The co the cost of maintenance also reduced. So that area also you must also know how to utilize even the cloud uh, computing. Uh, of course, as a business individual, you need also to have business skill. And that is the skill that will help you to be able to manage the business to success, and which includes leadership, customer relationship, bookkeeping, and so on and so forth. Because it's not just enough to be there and be making money, but at the same time also to actually grow that business from maybe the cottage size to small, then from small to medium, and if possible, even to make it large. Just even as Facebook did. Because actually, by the time he started, he meant even to just connect even, uh, uh, his friend. But now it has become something that is uh, international. Then, it's important also to have the skill related to called design thinking. And that is ability to focus on the human-centric side of the creative problem. Uh, solving. That is, you empathize with your customer and figuring out the market, the real problem, and then solve it then innovate based on the need. So what we are saying that the creative design thinking is about uh, understanding the customer or the market that you are to serve, then put yourself in their position to understand what exactly they want, how do they want it. And on the basis of that, you now come up with the solution on the basis of that understanding that you have garnered even from uh, a kind of interaction that you have developed with your customer. So, and uh, uh, with, with that, that we, we also, also have the project management. It's one of one way of building trust and, and to develop the product or services in a cost-effective and timely manner. As I mentioned the other time, yes, you just have to uh, respect it on time. So if you have to deliver something within one week, it must not be more, it must not be more than one week, if possible less, so that people will know that yes, you are very serious. And we are saying that. Project management skill is going to help you to be able to structure all the activity in such a way that yes, be able to uh, deliver on time. 
Now, now becoming, becoming a digital entrepreneur, entrepreneur what are the things that, of course, even uh, you know, becoming a leader and through digital entrepreneur involves an interest or passion or expertise that you believe will provide a solution to your target market. So that is the starting point. That there must be something that is of interest to you, or maybe passion that even that that that, that, that you have developed over the years or particular skill based on your discipline, you know how to do certain things very well. So once you have identified that, then you now try to see how you can deploy that your interest or your passion or that upon expertise to solve problems of other people. So that is the very first thing to become a digital entrepreneur. But now you want to now use data technology to, um, to create upon your uh, goods or services. Then Spotting digital entrepreneur opportunities. This is an important step in digital entrepreneur journey, and that is to, stop, to spot the problem in your target market. Then you provide the solution to improve the life of the customers and in, also in, innovate to make work better. Because that is all that is important, even about digital entrepreneurship, that we want to make the world better. We want to see how we can. Uh, use the digital technology to actually create goods or services or come up with a business model that will either reduce the cost or that is going to in, uh, improve the performance or that is going to uh, make life easier for people and so on and so forth. So, uh, so and that is the reason why it's important even to spot even that, uh, uh, the, the opportunity by looking at the problem. Then, of course, there is a need for you to educate yourself through reading books and articles. Because, for example, now all those people on the site that people have already sold their time, it's important to go through them. And if possible, read even books, even on those areas that are of interest to you. Attend seminars, webinars, and others on the forum that actually will give you the nitty gritty or help you to understand better. Yes, those things that even the target customer will actually need. And on the basis of that, you know that you are going to target them exactly. Uh, you know that you are just going to eat it in the periphery. So that is self-education. Then you must also ensure you build relationship and trust over the web. This one is very important, you know. So uh, to the other person at the end, even of the digital technology, also you are a virtual person. Your customer also is a virtual individual. So now the, 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 the problem of trust also is there. Will this person not scam me? So, ability to have to develop that trust and build the relationship over time. Because as people are beginning to have confidence in you, in your service, your product, and at the same time, you know, definitely, whatever you promise is what you are going to deliver. Then, of course, the more, more people also is going to come onto you. As we all know, also, even if the physical is not even digital, you know, when you offend, even a customer is going to tend to tell people, and whereas when you uh, satisfy them, the customer will just only tell from one person. So, ability to build that relationship and trust over the web is very important and it's going to really help even your business even to uh, thrive even on the, uh, on the web. So, in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, the key to operating in a globalized digital economy is to come up with models that are able to create and capture value locally. So what we are saying is essence that it's important to start even locally, trying to look at all the various problems and see how we can, yes, even use, use the power of digital technology to solve all those problems. Then, uh, as a result of that, it is not just building businesses, but also coming up with local solutions to local problems. And digital entrepreneurship definitely is providing even uh, opportunity on a lot of that, a lot of that line. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for attention, and God bless you. Please put your hands together for Professor Isaac Oluwa Joba Abereju. Thank you so so much. Please keep clapping, keep clapping as a show of appreciation. I am very convinced that that lecture was really very impactful. Thank you so, so very much. Props were indeed very grateful. Please, you may take your seat, sir. Please, we may be seated. Thank you so very much. I've always known that communication will never be complete until there is a complimentary feedback. 
We have come to that session where we'll have a measured gauge of the impact of this lecture on everyone here present. So we are going to have a question and answer session. Please put your questions together. Uh, for the want of time, we won't take more than five questions. Five questions in all, please. Please package your questions. Uh, in the exercise of my right as your anchor, uh, I, I assume the permission of the Vice Chancellor to ask the very first question. Before you ask the question, let's recognize the presence of the chairman of Bell's University Parents Forum, Mr. David Oladapo. Please, a round of applause for him, please. And to anchor the question and answer section, we call on Mr. Dotun Mabinori. Please, Mr. Dotun, please come forward. Shayo Fantubi. Please come Mr. Dotun, please. A round of applause for them as they come. Now, the very first question. Let me allow Prof relax a bit before I ask my question. Mr. Jatun Mabinori, please. Ms. Shayo Fatumbi, please come forward. A round of applause for them as they come. I actually have two questions, but for the want of time, I would ask one. Prof, sir, you would agree with me that the Nigerian infra and superstructures are yet to fully support ICT usages particularly in rural and semi-urban areas. Against this background, sir, how can one navigate these challenges in order to harness the gains of ICT as a panacea for economic development? Thank you, sir. Uh, once again, we welcome you all to this uh, great event. Uh, annual lecture series from Comas. So it's question and answer session. Please, let's make it snappy. As uh, our fellow presenter said, we have just five questions to be accepted. One has been asked, we have four to go, one down, four to go. So if you have questions, you can just come forward to ask, or you write it in a story and then bring it forward. Please, let's make it, let's make it snappy. That's the only feedback that we need from you people to know that uh, the message, the lecture was well delivered and well understood. So questions, please, from the crowd, staff, students, um, anyone? So, uh, in the absence of no question, okay, ma'am. The distinguished vice chancellor, I stand on the existing protocol. The college lecturer, we thank you for a wonderful lecture you've given us today. Mine is coming not necessarily as a question, but a contribution to. As a lecturer of entrepreneurship, I still also need your comment on because we are seeing entrepreneurship mostly at our students taking up an extra skill. Is there a way we can customize this course in different universities, not only in Paris University? We are developing that already in Paris University. We are a student of probably architecture, can learn a skill that will make him concentrate on this area of study and still be an entrepreneur there. For example, a student of history, there are a lot of skills the student of history can learn. Students of medicine, is there a way he can convert that medical practice, notwithstanding the ethics there, to become an entrepreneur? So I mean, I feel that uh, all the time we are concentrating on the students acquiring skills, like skills like um, learning how to uh, uh, sew in, a technology aspect of it, if we can also expand to students in a different college, different discipline, becoming an entrepreneur in that particular field he study. There are many skills he can develop there. A student of history can give up an ecological history of a family and make a lot of money from there. I want you to make a comment on this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ma. Uh, I think we'll allow our guest speaker to attend to all the questions um, together. We have another question here from the crowd. 
Ah, good question. Okay, can, the, can digital entrepreneurship skills be necessarily learned in school or elsewhere? That's the question, sir. Okay. Another question? All right, so the answers of no question, let's allow uh, the guest speaker to attend to the three questions. Yeah. Okay, I'll be permitted to ask my second question uh, because of the paucity of these questions. My second question, Professor, there is this public panic about technological innovations and outbreak of diseases. There is panic about 5G and outbreak of diseases. Are these myths or reality? I want your take on that, sir. Thank you. Uh, standing, uh, standing on the existing, existing protocol, protocol, I want to ask a German, uh, German question here. Yeah. Uh, most times, is the norms now in Nigeria that you study a course. Let's say, for instance, you are doing biology or fisheries, microbiology. When, you talk, when it's time to talk about entrepreneurship, it's okay, go and learn how to do tailoring. Go and, go and do skill acquisition. Why can't we concentrate on teaching people how to make money from their own feet? Teach them how to be feasible in our economy rather than adopting a skill and not feel you're on top of the world. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Any last question? Okay, the absence of no question, let's. Uh, thank you so much for all the question. Well, let me say, uh, start by saying that um, at the beginning when the issue of entrepreneurship started in Nigeria, we want to agree that definitely our government, through the agency of, that is uh, NUC, got it wrong. There's no doubt about that. Because uh, the thinking then was that how the government actually mop up the unemployment. And they are saying that one way of doing that is actually uh, exposing the student even to furious functional skills. With the understanding that yes, after school, they can then commercialize it. But later, it was discovered that definitely not the wrong way of actually addressing the unemployment. Because what then is going to make somebody who's a fashion designer as a graduate of electronics or computer or whatever? What will it make that individual different from those in the former sector? So, and that's the reason why I want to say that NUC, with the support of the Forum of Directors of Entrepreneurship in Nigeria, Entrepreneurship Development Center, they're already working along that line. So now to answer the question, definitely we say that we have gotten this wrong. So, uh, I was discussing with the dean by the time I came in the morning that one way of addressing that, apart from the normal general study, even the general study also, the curriculum NUC is working on it to make sure that yes, everything will be structured. Now, one way of actually addressing that is to introduce extracurricular activities, and that is providing even the student the opportunity, maybe three days, if possible, one week, to have it entrepreneurship boot camp when they are going to be taken through the process of business development, how to spot the problem, and how to use the skill and the knowledge acquired in their discipline, yes, even to solve that problem. So it's, a, it's something that, yes, cannot be done within the normal curriculum. It must be something outside. So I think maybe the, the university can, that is what even we do in our own university. We have for three days, sometimes one day, uh, first of all, to reorientate their mindset, inviting successful entrepreneurs, to let them understand that, yes, this thing is actually doable. It is possible for you to actually become an entrepreneur. Then we move on to now sitting them down, to now taking them through the processes of business development. Yes. And to make life easy, we now say, okay, look at any of the SDG goals, and then how can 
looking at the SDG and then how can you solve the problem? One of such is what I said. So any point of garment. Yes, of course, you can know how to sew different kinds of beds. Is there a way in which you can sew a kind of garment that will make it convenient for those who are wearing it, especially during the hot, even the weather and all those and whatever. So that is addressing the climate change. Then uh, uh, mopping, mopping up all these, uh, uh, all, all, the, all, all the various, various waste. waste. How can, can you convert it into something that is valuable? One of we will have one of our courses. We call it social entrepreneurship. Then we ask all the students to now just think out of the box and try to put to mop up the waste even within the way. Some of them they went even to collect the cap, the uh, the plastic bottle cap, and develop into a very big basket, very beautiful one. Can be served even as a laundry basket, or even the farmers can even use it even to transport it from their goods. So you know that is coming up. So which means that they are looking at the problem. And they also say, okay, as, uh, as an engineer, maybe electrical engineer, as a mechanical engineer, yes, what are those things that have been taught that are actually deployed even to solve this problem? So, in essence, you are correct by saying that, yes, it is not okay for us to ask if one of our students to go and be acquiring a uh, functional skill. However, we have seen some of these youth that even in spite of their, uh, after they have graduated from either engineering or medicine, because some of them they hands up people as a fashion designer, some of them hands up in some other even area that's quite different from so we do that the aspect of interest also we have to take note of it also. So and that is why we have provided that opportunity. Yes, are you interested in this area? And but at the same time, by the time you acquire that skill, yes, it's not just going to be just acquired to do that thing, to be able to make paint, to be able to sew garment. No, but how will you now? Uh, use that skill to solve a particular problem. What have you discovered, even in the existing uh, informal sector, that you can then uh, try to come up to come up with a solution? So, in essence, yes, use that skill to solve problem. Not just even uh, join even the uh, the background background of those informal sector, and again creating problem for them also. So it must be something that is innovative, something that is unique. So that's just even to answer that question. Then on the issue of challenge of connectivity, I think I mentioned even it the other time that it's important for our government to actually do something about it. Um, if it is possible, government can come up with the policy of uh, mandating all this uh, um, the internet service even a carrier to actually go into certain city and maybe of possible rural area to set up on their maps and make sure the thing is working. Because even within the time you discover that sometimes maybe they have problem with the generator that's actually powering even the mass, whatever, they just leave the thing there for about a week. So we think that there is no uh, monitoring to actually swear that this is actually working. So of course we need the agency of government also to come up with the strategies of ensuring that uh, 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 all, all, all of those that are providing for that of internet service in Nigeria, they are actually up and doing and do it even very well. Uh, about the issue of uh, the, uh, technology innovation and outbreak of uh, diseases, uh, well, I want to see that as a conspiracy theory, more or less. But at the same time, we cannot run away from that fact that it's, it's going to take some time for us even to know exactly the effect of the particular technology. For example, now, even this our the answer that we are using, uh, we, we have, have been cautioned not to put inside a pocket or anywhere or whatever, but even your, your hands or even your, your back. Because, because it's possible, possible also that even that, that waves can actually affect maybe our uh, system or whatever. But it's going to take time for us to understand. But now to talk about this 5G creating this problem, I, 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 don't, I don't think that maybe uh, <laughs> that kind of theory is actually is okay. It's just even a way of creating unnecessary even fear. But again, we all know that every technology has its own associated uh, danger. So that one is said. Uh, then uh, ed uh, education for entrepreneurship, this entrepreneurship, is it to be covered within school or outside? Well, I want to encourage one of our students. Uh, that is what even I told even our uh, students that are outside even of the campus now. I organized a kind of training for them in, co in collaboration with Google. They have even their representative in Nigeria to take them through digital entrepreneurship. So it took them about two months, starting from, uh, uh, I think, March, March, April. So we are just running it up now. So that one engaged even them 
over even that period. So we think that it's not only limited even to school, then of course that the need for you also to attend seminar, uh, uh, if possible also listen even to webinars and attend conferences where you can understand uh, uh, better even those, uh, that, that area that you are interested even in. So which means must, must not limit that education to your university but even outside also. So thank you so much. I hope I'm able to answer the question. Thank you very much, sir. And thank, thank you, you our listeners. And, uh, so. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for letting us sap a bit from your wealth of experience and wisdom. We appreciate you, sir. Next on the program is the presentation of clerks and gifts. I want to humbly and respectfully call on our amiable vice chancellor to please come forward that is the person of Professor Jeremiah Oludele Ojediron, RE Koren, MNSE, to come forward and present the first plug to His Excellency Dr. Mrs. Ibijoke Sonwolu, the wife of the Executive Governor of Lagos State, ably represented by the Vice Chancellor of Lagos State University. Professor Ibiemi Oladunji Belo. A round of applause, please. Please put your hands together for the Vice Chancellor as he comes. Please keep clapping, keep clapping. Keep clapping until he comes forward. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure we've all had a very interesting period listening to our guest lecturer who has gone, in, gone totally digital. Uh, he almost turned himself into digital while standing in there. Well done and for a good job, well thought out paper, well put together and well presented. Now on behalf of um, the College of Management Sciences and Thorpeus University of Technology. We want to sincerely appreciate the First Lady of Lagos State who has um, sent in here an amiable representative. You don't know what is, what is good that sitting very close to the representative of the First Lady. Throughout our presentation here, we were chatting on several issues from digital to non-digital, right? And um, in order to vice chancellor sit together, you need to share experience. We shared a lot of experiences today, and I'm sure a lot of things will come better. So on behalf of the College of Management Sciences, this is for the first lady. This year is um, the dean, it's what's called Adire, and that's what we are known for in various University of Technology. Let me digress a bit. Our academic gown, which the which Vice Chancellor uses, as of your needs. We are very local. We are very indigenous. We are national. So whenever you come in here, you must take back something that represents us. So this is for the First Lady on behalf of um, Bell's University of Technology, College of Management Sciences. Please tell us where to her. Tell her we shall wait. That God will keep her, God will sustain her, God grant her wisdom, knowledge, understanding to pull us all together and move things forward. Thank you so much for coming. The Lord bless you and keep you. And sustain you also. The Vice Chancellor, please, you are also going to make another presentation to the Lagos State. Vice Chancellor of Lagos State University, Vice Chancellor, and the person of Mrs. Ibiemi. Well, in the person of Ibiemi herself, yes. um, you can represent someone, and then after that, 
represent yourself. So, so nobody is representing you, you yourself now. So, on behalf of the University of Technology, I want to thank, thank you for being here personally. You're a very busy person, we know that. Taking time out to come here and stay throughout makes us very happy. We are proud of that. We feel highly honored. Thank you very much and God bless you. Keep you. Grant you wisdom to rule the university. Thank you so much, sir. A round of applause, please. Yes, we are still presenting gifts and plaques. I want to respectfully and humbly call on the DVC, Deputy Vice Chancellor, so please come forward as it makes the next presentation. Professor Chiu, Professor Francis Chiu. A round of applause as they come forward. We are calling on our guest lecturer, Professor. May we please very respectfully invite Professor Isaac Oluwa Joba Abere Ijo, the recipient of the next presentation, please. Please put your hands together. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Well, I have been talking, been talking to, to myself, myself and I, I think, think I'm not too comfortable, comfortable the Vice Chancellor is not around. I've been, been asking, asking myself who is tricking me to, re to ravaging an established tradition and performing A right by this, which naturally should be reserved to the high priest, who is no person other than the vice chancellor. Let me humbly invite the other members of management who are here present to please join me in handing over. in handing over this presence and gift of honor and utter respect to a man who has delivered a lecture so fresh, so imaginatively creative, so elucidating, so exonerating, and above all, a pathfinder in the lives of those of us that are treading the path of entrepreneurship. On behalf of the Vice Chancellor, sir, on behalf of all the members of management, on behalf of all the deans here present, all staff and students here present, all our respectable and most respectful of guests here present, I wish to present this to you as a token and a priceless gift. You are more than this. And we wish to thank you for coming here and making this day a fruitful one Please in put the your academic hands part of everybody. Thank you very much and God bless you. Still in the same vein, the Deputy Vice Chancellor will be presenting a souvenir from the university to our guest lecturer. Please put Let your hands together. Still, on behalf of the university, present to you this package as a token of our love 
and our appreciation for what you have so handsomely done this afternoon. Thank you very much. Still on the presentation of plaques, we, uh, we humbly call on Alaji Tafa to kindly step forward to present the next gift to the various students that are worth honoring today. The first on the list is Umba Nefertiti Chisom. She is the overall best student in business administration. A hand of applause for her, please, as she comes forward. Please put your hands together for university registrar as he comes forward to make the next presentation, please. Thank you. Umba Nefetiti Chisong. Please make it snappy. Please make it snappy. Okay, she's on her way, please. Please make it snappy. A round of applause for her as she comes forward. Can Miss Oyeni move your solar get ready and come close? Well, on behalf of the College of Management Sciences, I present to you this uh, beautiful plaque as the overall best, grad, best student for academic excellence. Congratulations. Yes, Please put your hands together. She has a CGPA of 4.85. That's, That's what, what I'm relating. A round of applause for her, please. Next to come forward is Oyeni Moyosola A. Miss Oyeni Moyosola Aminat has a cumulative grade point average of 4.96. From the Department of Economics. Put your hands together for her, please. On behalf of the Department of Economics, present to you this plan as the overall best student in the Department of Economics. Congratulations. And the next to come forward is Ugwa Nandi Edward from Management Tech. Edward has a CGPA of 4.35. Please put your hands together for him. Edward, please. Mr. Ugwa Nandi Edward, please come forward. Please make it snappy. On behalf of the Department of Management Technology, I present to you this beautiful plaque as the overall best student in the department. Congratulations. We shake hands. A round of applause. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please put your hands together for the university registrar as he goes to take his seat. Thank you, May sir. we, thank on you, a final sir. note, invite Mr. Olaleko Oluwaji for vote of thanks. Mr. Oluwaji, please, to give vote of thanks on behalf of the College Lecture Committee and the College of Mind and Sciences. Please, please put, put your hands, hands together, together as he comes for forward. Engineer Olale Oluwaji as he comes forward to give his vote of thanks. Engineer Oluwaji, please. Please keep clapping, keep clapping keep as he clapping makes his as way. He comes forward. And may I very respectfully charge Dr. B.A. Bello to get ready to take the closing prayer. Permit me to stand on the existing protocol. On behalf of the team, staff, and students of Comas, I say thank you to our proactive management of Bells for granting us approval for this our 12th college lecture and your support in all aspects. To our guest lecturer all the way from IFE, the VC of Lasso, every represent that represented the wife of the governor of Lagos State, other invited guests from far and near, we say thank you to you all 
as you go back to your various destinations, we wish you a safe trip. To start from Best University of Technology, academic and non-academic staff, you all made a day. You are all appreciated. To a wonderful student of Best Technology, honestly, you made us proud. You came out in numbers and came out on time. There is a saying in Best that says, Best Tech, only the best is good for best. Honestly, you are the best. In your academics, in your studies, you will do well, you will excel. And in all, we say thank you to everyone who has made this occasion a success. And once again, my acknowledgement goes to the CEO of Lexoki Hotels and Suits, Brigadier General Shokeye. We thank you for your gesture. May the Almighty God replenish your pores and we will all continue to lift our college and our university to high places. Thank you. A round of applause for him, please. We want to specially recognize students from Royal College. They have come to grace this occasion. We want to specially thank you. Please put your hands together for Dr. B. A. Bello as he leads us in a closing prayer. Thank you. Salut Allah Nabi Kareem. We thank Almighty Allah for the success of today's uh, lecture. I want to pray for the management of this university that Almighty Allah in his divine mercy will continue to protect right from the Vice Chancellor and his team. I also like to pray for the invited guests and the special lecturer from uh, uh, OAU and the Vice Chancellor of uh, Lagos State University that as we have welcomed our invitation, Almighty Allah will continue to bless him. And to all the staffs of this university, we shall all live to enjoy the fruit of our labor. And to our students, it is my prayer that you will all succeed in life. You will not become a dropout. May Allah continue to answer our prayer. Amen. Amen. Shall we remain standing as we take the verse university and ten? The National Anthem.
please let's remain standing as the university management team file out. I have the permission of the Dean of College of Management Sciences to inform us that there is refreshment for everyone. The university management team and the guest lecturer are to go to temperance to have some refreshment. I've also been informed that the anchors are invited. The Dean has asked me to invite my humble self and I compare. It has been wonderful having you.